Welcome to another Retro Shelf video as we unbox another book from Fusion Retro Books and this has been written by a friend of mine. So let's look inside and we can find ZX Nightmares. Celebrating the hopeless, the hardest and the controversial ZX Spectrum games that we love to hate by Graham Mason. And Graham is a fellow writer on Retro Gamer. ZX Nightmares, the first book to celebrate those terrifying ZX Spectrum games that many gamers endured back in the 80s. From insanely difficult shoot 'em ups such as Airwolf to simply awful budget efforts such as Squidge and Voyage to the Unknown, ZX Nightmares celebrates all those games we played and wished we hadn't. So this is uh, available through Kickstarter and published by Fusion Retro Books. And as you can see, one of the stretch goals was to have the ribbons added. And so we'll have a look through the cover and book design by Steve Day. Thanks to Gary Arnott for graphical support. The foreword from Nick Roberts, formerly of Crash. The contents, and you can see we're splitting the games in here into four separate sections. So we have loathsome licenses, patience of a saint, they did what, simply awful. Introduction by Graham. And then the first section, loads some licenses from heroes to zeros. So these are games based on other properties. So for example, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain based on the Fighting Fantasy book, Superman the Game from First Star, one of several bad Superman games. Action Biker, much better on the C64. Blade Runner based on the soundtrack by Vangelis, not the movie. Conversion of Saxon from the arcade, Super Gran. Miami Vice, ER Kung Fu 2, Highlander Promotion, there can be only one, Knight Rider from around the same time, Promotion, Friday the 13th from Domark, which came with Blood Capsules, It's a Knockout, another poor ocean effort there, US Gold's Kung Fu Master, Play Your Card Rights, Protonia Software based on the TV show, Breakthrough from US Gold, converted from the arcade, another Bad conversion on several machines. V, which is very difficult to get past the first section. EastEnders from Maxim, one of several titles they license. Transatlantic Balloon Challenge from Virgin Games. Centurions from Reactor, based on the cartoon and the toys. Howard the Duck, forgotten Marvel superhero there. Masters of the Universe. Pink Panther. Star Wars Droids, based on the cartoon, track and field from Ocean, Peter Beardsley's International Football, one of the truly worst football games ever, Superman, The Man of Steel, there we go again, we're back to Superman, Double Dragon from Merwan House, very poor attempt, that Renegade 3, the final chapter, which was hyped at the time, but is now considered bad, Stun Runner from Domark, E Swap from US Gold, Cyberball from Domark, Dick Tracy, terrible game across multiple machines, Outrun Europa, follow up to Outrun done by US Gold themselves through Pro, Pit Fighter from Domark, Count Ducula 2, and then on to the second section, Patience of a Saint, hard as nails and amount as much fun to play. It's a really tricky game. Zaluna Jetman, I agree, very tricky game. Technician Ted, Jasper from Micro Mega. Jack and the Beanstalk, Brax Bluff, Fahrenheit 3000, Jet Set Willy, which you actually need either poke to help you complete, because otherwise it was impossible, Airwolf, Death Star Interceptor, Zoids. Once you get into it, the once you've got the instructions, it's fun to play. Very tricky to work out, but fun to play. Panzer Drone, Aerial Soft, Monty on the Run from Gremlin. Very tricky game. Magic Carpet, one of those insane budget games we the difficulty is high because there's not much game there over simple profanation which remains one of the most difficult games rasputin made more difficult thanks to the controls but i quite like the game ses operation thunderflash 
Cold and true, the pumpkin strikes back, made difficult by the bouncing. Strike Force Cobra. Now, I do like Strike Force Cobra. There are issues. It's quite slow to play, but again, not totally bad. Caverns of Contonia from Atlantis. Atlantis didn't always send their games to be reviewed because they would have been given bad reviews. Spin Dizzy, Patience of a Saint. Very tricky game, very tricky to complete. Cyber Run from the later period of Ultimate. Ghosts and Goblins, very tricky game. Pentagram, also from Ultimate. Action Force. Slap Fight from the Arcades. Schlanya, based on the 2080 comic strip. And that was mainly down to the difficulty of controlling it. You had Slana's forts and you had to grab them to do something, which is a difficult control method. Oriental Hero from Firebird. Army moves, dynamic of course, infamous for their difficulty. Mad Balls from Ocean. Navy moves from Dynamic again. Rick Dangerous, very tricky game, but still very enjoyable. Tomcat, perhaps not the best game, but particularly tricky on the spectrum because you can't see the bullets. And now they did what? Stirring up a storm, specky style. Harry attack. BC Bill, we have to club potential mates over the head and drag them back to your cave. Travel with Trashman, the follow-up. Crime Busters Inc. Commando. Street Hawk. Very strange situation with Street Hawk. There was a game, there wasn't a game, it's published, it wasn't published. It's. I still have fond memories of the TV show. Jet Set Willy 2. More rooms, basically. Dracula. Controversial because of the 15 certificate, which was partly a marketing ploy, but Rod Pike, the creator, was concerned that the graphics in the other versions were pretty grim. Ole Toro. Dynamic and Americana, so a Spanish game about the hobby of bullfighting. There's not many of those around. Explorer from Electric Dreams. Infamous for the huge number of locations it had. Supercom from Atlantis. Sam Fox Strip Poker by Martech. Started out just as a poker game, then had the poorly digitised pictures of page three model Sam Fox added to it. Twister, originally known as Twister Mother of Harlots. Renamed to Twister, Mother of Charlotte, to just simply Twister, and advertised with some scantily clad ladies at a trade show. Scooby Doo, the original plans were for a um, massive graphic interactive game, but turned into a simple platform game. World Cup Carnival, probably most people know this, licensed from Arctic Software, and it was a terrible game in fancy packaging, and it was not good. Barbarian, controversy over the depiction of Maria Whitaker as the Princess Mariana. And as most people now know, the other person on the cover was Michael Van Wyck, who went on to be the gladiator known as Wolf. Game over, another tricky game from Dynamic Jack the Ripper, which had an 18 certificate. Nemesis from Konami. The preview in the Spectrum magazines look completely different to the final game. Soft and Cuddly, The Powerhouse, Mr. Weems and the She Vampers, or to give it its full titles, The Astonishing Adventures of Mr. Weems and the She Vampers. Terrible game, terrible name. Vixen, another pre page free model in the shape of Corrine Russell there. Famous or infamous for its adverts. Mad Nurse. Strange budget game, we have to protect the baby babies from electrocuting themselves, falling in the toilet, falling down the lift shaft. Wouldn't get made today. Psycho Pigs UXB, another one infamous for its advertising campaign. Game is a lot of fun though, I do like it on the C64. The Great Guiana Sisters, never released on the Spectrum. Uh, ran into problems because of the similarities to Super Mario Bros. The C64 version remains superb. Simply awful, terrible ideas, terrible games. Or both. I do like the presentation with the sprites and the games to show you. So we have Crazy Kong, what's crazy with a K, Caveman from CRL, Devils of the Deep, Richard Shepard Software, the company that would go on to become Elite, Cassette 50 from Cascade, infamous for being terrible games, Cosmic Pirate, Elephant Software, 
Butterfly from Pulse Sonic, The Great Space Race from Legend, the follow-up to Valhalla in a similar big box, um, but it was a really poor game. 1985, The Day After, from Mastertronic, Flak from US Gold, which is basically a variation on Exavius, but nowhere near as good. Voyage into the Unknown, Mastertronic. How's that? From Wyvern Software, later republished by Alternative Budget Price. Very poor cricket game. Don't buy this. It literally said on the cover, don't buy this. People bought it. Flight Path 7 Breeze 7, very early flight simulator. 101 Basketball, great game on the C64, nowhere near as good on the Spectrum. Realm of Impossibility, looks simple. Plays a lot better on the C64 again. Dr. Watt. Now, I like Dr. Watt. I think this is a fun game. I love the puns. Dr. Why, Dr. Who, Dr. Where. I love all that. And it's a flick screen game. If this had come out a couple of years later and featured an egg, the Spectrum fans would have raved over it. But I digress. LA Swap. Absolutely terrible game. Squidge, the powerhouse, is... Famously now, one of the worst games ever, programmer, basically supposed to be a converting game, didn't work properly, and it didn't work properly because of the way it was written in basic, so it took ages to do anything if you could get it to move at all. Leviathan, English Software, 1987, inspired by Zaxxon. Dawnsley from Top 10. Top 10 had some really bad games. Uchimata. Uchimata is a judo simulator for Martech. And there's some interesting ideas in there. And one of the things I find particularly interesting is the control method. The control method used is rotational inputs years before Street Fighter 2 did it. Rapid Fire from Mastertronic Race. Poor game then. California Games, a shame it's not so good on the Spectrum. Cage Match. Terrible game on any format, also known as Intergalactic Cage Match. C64 version is pretty terrible too. BMX Ninja, just just no, don't go anywhere near that game. That is really horrible stuff. You have to hit the other bikes by doing a stunt on your bike and the collision direction is just terrible. It's really bad to play. Freedom Fight from the Powerhouse. The Powerhouse, another company that had some awful games. Ready, Steady, Go from Alternative. NATO Assault Course. Essentially Combat School by another name, and that wasn't good on any format. Kung Fu Knights from Top 10. Top 10 again. Very poor. Dream Warrior from US Gold, famously featured in the Computer Warrior strip in Eagle Comic. But uh, another tricky game, not very fun to play. Echelon from US Gold is a wireframe Simulator, very similar to Star Glider, it moves very slowly. And what is interesting is on the C64, you had an extra peripheral called the lipstick. So you could plug that in. And the idea was you shouted fire into it and it fired your weapons. Very cumbersome, very clunky. Not very well remembered. Dynamic Duo. So you controlled two characters. One of them was a duck. Another terrible game across formats. Motor Massacre. Another one you're better off not playing. Circus Games from Timesoft, multi-format, multi-event game based around Circus. It wasn't very successful. Penalty Soccer from Game Busters. No, another bad, bad football game there. Just simply concentrating on penalty kicks. And the acknowledgements from Graham. So Graham is a freelance writer specialising in retro gaming. For the last 13 years, he's written over 200 articles for the award awarding Retro Gamer magazine, a regular contributor for websites such as Eurogamer and The Guardian, as well as for Fusion Retro Books, Revival of Crash, Zap, and Amtics. He lives in rural Essex together with no cats, no dogs, or indeed pets of any kind, unless you count 150 terrible Spectrum games. And there we have the ribbons in the Spectrum colours, obviously. So, that is ZX Nightmares. And I'm thinking. Perhaps there should be a C64 equivalent. Anyway, keep watching the channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more Retro Shelf, Merch Stand, Gameplay, 
unboxing videos.